that's it. We just want to win for our team. My goodness! as good as men or better it's a huge point for the bay area good chance that's the number one highlight of the week oh yeah you know what it is it is the final session on the final day of the West Division of Major League Table Tennis. It is week 13 of MLTT, and we're coming to you live from Wichita, Kansas. Wichita, are you guys ready? All righty, then let's bring out the officials, Jovana Knezhevich and Jorge Vanegas. And now the first team coming in has 202 points. They're in number three right now, and they come all the way from the coast. A warm welcome for the Portland Paddlers! Led by coach Christian Lillerose. Players, Jonathan McDonald, Tyrese Knight the Night Train, Rachel Sung, Isaac Vila, it's Kole and Jiwei Sha, and their opponents now. The ooh, I almost ruined the surprise. They're in fourth place right now. They've got 182 points. A warm welcome for the Seattle Spinners. <laughs> Leading the party, the main spinner, Coach Luba Sadovska. Players. Johan Hogberg, Andrew Tsao, Paul Chi, Fabiola Diaz, Nikhil Kumar, and Olajide Omotayo. So now that all the Warriors have entered the arena, let's shake some hands and slap some skins and let the games begin. Well, it's been a pleasant weekend so far here in Wichita, and for the 88th and final time during the inaugural Major League Table Tennis regular season, we welcome you to MLTT action. Final game of the weekend here inside Coke Arena, the Portland Paddlers taking on the Seattle Spinners, battling for Pacific Northwest pride, Portland has won three of the five meetings against Seattle this year, but the paddler is officially eliminated from postseason consideration after Texas took care of business, earning 15 points against the Bay Area Blasters earlier this afternoon. Still excited to bring this one to you. Hey, everybody, Evan Leffler with the Hall of Famer, Sean O'Neill. We got some different lineups today, perhaps some looser competitors considering the stakes don't involve a trip to the postseason, but obviously two teams that want to finish the season with a win. And definitely one of the new angles is an all-women's match in singles, so we're going to have a chance to see some new doubles teams, but the ladies will be going at it as well. Big day for Rachel Sun. She's playing the singles and the doubles for the second day in a row. She'll play doubles with Cole, Playing singles against Seattle's Fabiola Diaz. Let's look at the season results this year. Portland has uh, done the job against Seattle more often than not. And uh, 16 to five each of the last two events. But uh, the spinners have played well this weekend. They had a lead going into the Golden Game yesterday but could not get the win. We take you back to September where Portland overcame a 5-0 deficit in the Golden Game to win 11 to 10. The Seattle Spinners had the victory in October by a 13 to eight score. Adi Serene winning the ultimate golden point. Nikhil Kumar getting the better of Kole there, but uh, Seattle won that November matchup 14-7. But January and February in the Pacific Northwest, the paddlers were the better side. And they just really, they had their back against the walls and they came out firing. This will be a very interesting match as we see Tyrese Knight getting a chance to play in the A-B position. So players getting a chance to see some different opponents. 
Should be a very interesting match. Yes, indeed. Final match of the regular season. We are 20 days from championship weekend. We'll talk a little bit about the matchups. We'll speculate about some postseason awards. We will get Sean O'Neill's decision as to who he expects to hoist the trophy in a few weeks. Paddlers and spinners. First match up next. Back inside the home of the Wichita State Shockers, Coke Arena, and here's the lineup for the Paddlers and the Spinners, meeting number six, Tyrese Knight, Andrew Sow in the first singles spot. No Olajide Omatayo and no Jiwe Sha today. Two AB players sitting this one out, which allows Rachel Sung and Fabi Diaz to play in that second singles spot. We also have the Swedish showdown in the fourth singles spot. Second time this year, Jonathan and Johan will yeah, square up. Yeah, the Battle of Stockholm. So both players will have some bragging rights as well as the Pacific Northwest, whether Seattle or Portland will get to say they were the best of the West. First game to play. Andrew Sal will serve Spinner first serves. against Tyrese zero, Knight. First zero. meeting between these two this year, which surprised me a little bit to realize they had not played before. First point is any indication. It's going to be a pretty entertaining match. One, zero. Andrew does have a bigger forehand. Zero, two. Tyrese will chip on the backhand, bringing it back with heavy underspin. Then given the opportunity, he'll try to step around and deliver a very strong forehand. That time just overplaying the ball a little Zero, bit. Zero, three. And these games go fast. <laughs> Andrew Sow is just outlasting Tyrese Four, right zero. now. Long rallies. Sows won them all. Andrews swept three straight games from Nishant Lavaca on Friday night. And I should say that was yesterday. 5-0. Of course, that's something Sonora Silva couldn't do. Exactly. Three straight from Lavaca, so that's impressive. And Andrew took two out of three from the Bay Area Blasters' Alexi Duan on Friday. So it's been a good weekend so far for Andrew and a fantastic start for this match. 
Tyrese One, snaps five. the five point string, gets his first. Serve, got away from Tyrese, One, just popped six. up. Andrew took care of business. Much better serve on the second opportunity, but Knight Seven, sends the one. attack long. A little tentative. Seven, two. Wow. That is one monster of a forehand by Andrew Sal. Two, eight. Just no hesitation. Great body movement, putting Two, everything nine. into it. Eight. Two, nine. Just like Alexi Duan, Tyrese Knight, when he's asked who to play this weekend in singles, nine, he can just say three. Sal. Took on Daryl. Nine, three. And now Andrew. The South oh. Brothers. Ten, three. Game one belongs to Andrew Sal. Eleven, three. For He's now game. six and one in singles games on the weekend. Playing to the first singles spot, which has not been his customary position. But the young teenager has been very solid here in Wichita. And he's got the spinners out to the 1-0 lead. Beginning this day, 20 points behind two. the paddlers in the standings. Second game, paddlers to serve. Require zero, a 21 0. nothing win for Seattle to surpass Portland for third place. Andrew Sal certainly off to a zero, splendid one. start. One oh. Little battle of the side spins there, Tyrese. Side spin scoop shots. Tyrese does it much more often as a defender. Andrew loves the rip right down the middle of the table that time. Two, one. Wow. Look at that shot by Andrew Sal. One, High level three. stuff. If you look at what's happened this weekend and really all season long, the 11-3 score in game number one today is surprising in how lopsided it is. Two, three. 76% of all games through the MLTT season, this is over 1,300 games now, have been decided by five three, points or fewer. Oh. About half of all games have been decided by three or less. John, the next golden point we have will be the 200th golden point of the season, not including ultimate golden points. We've had six of those, but 199 golden points so far. Four, three. And I can promise you we'll have a couple of those in this match. 
these matchups. Very close level play. But Andrew Sow doing a really nice Three, job, being five. patient, taking his time. More importantly, keeping the ball in play when Tyrese is in the backcourt. Four, five. Tyrese far more competitive here in game two. What's changed? Just doing a better job of mixing it up. Four hands landing. Five. More important, Whoa. great placement. You can see on that last ball, Andrew tried to step around, but played directly into his body. Five, six. When Tyrese is aggressive on the first ball, he puts so much more pressure than when he goes straight into defense and gives the opponent a chance to make the first swing. Six. Oh. Tyrese winding up like he's going to hit a winner, Six, but it just catches seven. the tape and sails off the table. Certainly a shot he expects to make. We're tied seven all as Sal seven sends four. it wide. We might be getting this golden point here in game two. We just might. And then that ball changes Eight, the timing. Seven. Tyrese had already taken the backswing. That's some off-season work I'd like for the MLTT social media staff and to put together a reel of all 200 golden points from the season, something like that. I think that would be an excellent idea. And look at Tyrese Knight covering the whole Eight. table, oh. finishing off with a step around from the backhand corner, going inside out to Andrew Sal's wide backhand. Nine eight lead for Tyrese Knight. And Tyrese just making his eight. offense count. Much more deliberate. Nine eight. Forcing the offense, taking Andrew out of his comfort zone. Once again. Eight ten. Now with a couple of serves, trying to fight off game points. Boy, there have been a number of net balls here Nine, in this match so ten. far. Players keeping it extremely low. And we've got the 200th golden point ten. of the season. Oh. All Not right. including here golden games. This is the 1,307th game of the year, and 200 of them have been golden points. And Andrew Sal wins it. Very different style of competition in game two compared to the eight point route in game one. But same result nonetheless. Andrew Sal comes from 10 8 down and takes the golden point over Tyrese Knight.
at the merch store. Other than that, we got a concession stand. The food is edible. And not only Dime. that, the Tyrese it's night was hey, close. Time for game number three. No cigar in game number two. Spinners to serve. Let's see what zero, the zero. Barbados native can do, trying to salvage a point for his team in game three. Zero, one. Wow. And Tyrese almost able to get that One. back. Oh. <laughs> 2-1. One. Andrew does not want that play to One, occur. Three. He's back lobbing, playing defense, and Tyrese is up at the table, driving his forehand. That will be advantage paddlers. Two, three. Fair to say that all choppers are more comfortable being farther away from the table than a guy with South style? Absolutely. Oh, oh goodness, <laughs> can you believe that? Caught the net and oh. snuck it under Tyrese's racket. That's more like it from Tyrese Knight. Four, three. Andrew's doing a really Four. nice job oh. of when he is attacking, going out to the forehand, staying away from the long pips on the Let's backhand side of Knight, which is red. You can hear it, it's a little bit of a higher pitch, but it can reverse the spin so effectively and literally give Andrew his loop back at him with the same amount Five. of underspin that he delivered off of the forehand topspin. Uh, for calculating winners to unforced errors, Andrew Sow certainly has a very positive ratio this weekend. He's taken a lot of big swings, and more often than not, they've been good shots. He just shows you a lot in his development Five. as a player. Oh. Willingness to go big. He has no problem in the power department if there's any Five, six. book on how to give Andrew difficulty. It's really the consistency of sometimes Seven, five. going for shots when maybe a block or a positional return would be a smarter move. Seven, six. They tend to Seven. even out. Oh. Yep. Generally, you don't feel that when it's occurring to you on the table. Seems like the Pong gods are always frowning upon your Seven, side eight. when the opponent gets one, but they are returnable, and often they're attackable if you're expecting it. Eight, oh. Another very competitive game, eight all. It's a de facto game to three. Tyrese Knight handles the net ball there, stays Eight, in the point, nine. gets the error from Andrew. So many net nine, and out, oh. net and in balls in this match. What do you think, Sean? Are we going to get another golden I point I think so. Here? I think we will. First game point belongs to Tyrese. Ten, nine. Trying to get his paddlers on the board. And he will. So Knight salvages game two, three. Still speakers. a strong weekend for Andrew Sal. As Andrew goes 7-2 in singles games, but 
Tyrese gets his first victory of the day, and the paddlers are on the board here in Wichita. First time in this MLTT season, Andrew Sow gets three match wins in a weekend. Andrew, congratulations. Uh, did you have a sense coming into this weekend that it would be a good one for you? Uh, yeah, because I I think I've practiced a lot within the last two months, and I feel very good in matches. So, yeah. But actually, I didn't even know I was going to play until this morning. Yeah. Are you excited to play for a third match and be in that yeah. first single spot? Of course, because... Like, it's the last match of the season, and we're just trying to have fun and mix things up this, this match. So knowing that you won't be playing in the playoffs, looking back at the entire season, what are going to be your biggest takeaways for what you learned, what it was like being in this particular team, and then looking forward to season two? I learned that it's a lot more than just singles. Like, it's more as a team game, because all of us have to perform well together, especially in the Golden Game, to win the match instead of only singles. Well, you finish uh, 27 and 15 in singles games. Uh, how would you grade your first season as a pro? I think I played really good. Like, I didn't expect myself to play even this good, but yeah. What I are the biggest things you want to be working on going into next season? Uh, I think overall, maybe in the rally, I need to be more consistent and maybe some physical improvements, and that's pretty much it, yeah. Andrew, it's been fun watching you battle. Congrats, we'll see you uh, in doubles with Nikhil here shortly. Thank you. All right, Rachel Sung and Fabiola Diaz have both played singles sparingly this year, and this will be their first time in a singles match squaring off against each other. Rachel has often had Fabi's number in golden games, but uh, how stylistically will these two players match up in a singles match over the course of three games to 11. Well, really the biggest difference between these two, apart from the obvious righty-lefty matchup, is that Fabi Diaz plays with a pimpled out surface on her backhand side, which takes spin off the ball, but also allows her to hit it very flat. So she's gonna try to slow down the rally, especially on the backhand side, and if the opportunity presents itself to crack that backhand in, her forehand's a little bit more control, keep it on the table. Rachel Sung, lefty, Olympian going to Paris, very tight in short serves, likes to make a small forehand opening and then quickly take the ball off the bounce and use rhythm and tempo to give her the advantage. Looks like Rachel is going to mix up the serves, both short and long, keep Fabi off balance. Zero, one. See it. Mix up on the serve, then a quick drop shot. Fabi is going to have two. to keep her feet moving in order to be in position to make her attacks. And there, Rachel Sun just snapping Zero, that three. forehand in. Four straight points for Rachel Sung Four, at the start. Zero. Too good. 
Just like her roommate, Amy Five, Wong, any zero. loose high ball, instead of looping it, Rachel will go for a forehand smash. Not as much spin. But wow. Right off the bounce. Bobby hit that return much better. And zero. still, Rachel was ready for it. Rachel has such good timing, especially on the off the bounce shots. But Fabi has some very effective deep serves. Zero, seven. Bobby Diaz is in trouble right now. Just needs to break the ice, and that's not going to do it. Eight, zero. Let. And again, Rachel opting for a deep serve of her own. Nine, nothing to Rachel Sung. Nine, and not zero. giving an inch every opportunity. And ruthless. And a service error from Sung will get Diaz on the board. One, nine. A tremendous great. rally, and Diaz finding a little bit of a rhythm. Two, nine. Not easy to keep that ball in play with Diaz as she's changing the speed and spin, especially off the backhand side. But there's Rachel Sung's Ten, powerful forehand two. smash. Whoa, nice play by Fabi. Ten, three. Small pop-up, but stayed with it. That's game, though. Eleven yes. three for his game. Has Down nine, nothing. Then scored three of the next four points. But Rachel Sung with a dominant opening game in this second single spot. Adlers back even, two points apiece here on a Sunday in Kansas. Game two here about Nine. to begin. Rachel Sung and Fabiola Second Diaz. Spinners to serve. 2 2 zero, on the scoreboard zero. through four games. Final match of the regular season. Major League Table Tennis's first season of existence. And of course, this is the first season One, of fantasy zero. table tennis as well. And the, the other significant storyline right now involves the endless competition Zero, of two. point pursuit and trash talk between myself and my esteemed color analyst Sean O'Neill and it, it's been a good weekend for MLTT play by play in the fantasy that's me but uh, you've had an excellent weekend as well and and you're in actually a position to, to surpass Three, me Sean one. but Rachel Sung needs to have an unbelievable day for you she's got you know, 10 fantasy points already for her for the dominant Three, win in game two. one. There are 30 available points for her in the singles, 15 in the doubles, and then golden game. Golden game where she could get as many as 32 points in fantasy if you each fantasy, each uh, golden game point is worth four two, fantasy points. Four. Anyway, so what is that? 45 plus 32 is 77. So the maximum she could get is 77 points. Three, if she gets four. 52 points, <laughs> you will tie me. 
53 points. 53 for the win. From Rachel would, would give you the win over me. And I know you don't really care about beating anybody else other than me. Well, you know the new name of my team, so. You changed Four. it since oh. last, uh, last month. So I did let Rachel know that during the walkout. Yeah, all the she pressure looked, she was looked, on she her. Was mortified by you telling her <laughs> that you were counting on her fantasy points. But uh, Four, you know, it's, five. it's an interesting wrinkle to the competition for sure. Every time that I have beaten you, I have been surprised because you are, you know, the godfather of American table oh, Absolutely. Six, no, it, four. It's, it's a major win, and the only consolation was when we got over on the table and we could work on your forehand and backhand that I felt like I was back in control. Well... The reality is, you know, Matt Hetherington had a really good uh, New Jersey event in March, but he has just been an afterthought this oh, weekend. He so hasn't Matt, even been in the discussion. Matt needs to go back to the drawing board Six, and rethink his five. entire strategy and game plan because the, uh, the pride of New Zealand commentary has really had an embarrassing showing. And I'm not, fantasy team not sure five, if I even want to mention seven. the late change by MLTT play-by-play play who took advantage of some insider knowledge. That's not insider knowledge. I looked at the lineup. <laughs> the lineup after it came out. <laughs> that's that's Five, called eight. using the information you have to your benefit. You're allowed to change your roster to set it right up until the first serve. Exactly. And Rachel continues on a Nine, tear. Five. And her forehand combo is paying big dividends. Miss Mimi Smarty Pants, of all people, <laughs> accused me of cheating Ten, and saying I had inside five. information when she is the queen of inside information. <laughs> she knows the travel schedule, whether anyone needs extra medication 11, or if they five. have missed the bus. Second game. Uh, Rachel Sung Battle. has 20 quick fantasy points for the Portland Paddlers. A little bit closer than game one, but still a lopsided score. Sung. Outscore Diaz 22 to 8. We'll see if Fabi can change it up in game three. Sung and Diaz back to the table for game three. Third game. Rachel will stay on the table to play doubles alongside Kole against Andrew Sow and Akil Kumar after this match. I mean, if Rachel is playing like that on her serve, is there anything Fabiola Diaz can do? Just really has to have some spin, especially off her forehand loop to Let. stop the easy smash, but the defensive returns aren't going to get it done. Rachel is just too powerful. Yeah. One, oh. Well, she could do some of that. I mean, the pushes Two, that hit the one. net and come back over are very <laughs> tough to return. <laughs> well, three one lead for Diaz one, here in game three. Rachel three. needs to focus. <laughs> And that's a beautiful backhand step One, over four. on the forehand side to get her pips into play. So, saw her play at cross court. Not a lot of spin on that ball. Oh, does it again, but Rachel's backhand is just four, too risky. Two. Just snapping that into play to 
and bring it back within two points. Four, three. So clean, so crisp. After Four, Rachel makes that oh. first opening spin, follows it up with a beautiful forehand hit. Nice play by both players. Rachel on the Five, defense. Four, change. With Fabi getting her forehand players, into play. Change side. Who's the favorite in the doubles match that's coming up, Sean? That's truly an interesting mixed mixed match with the Six, mixed four. players from Portland against the all-male team of Seattle. I'm going to go with for the season. Mixed doubles teams have actually done pretty well against men's I think, doubles. I teams. think I'm going to go with Portland. I think just the fact they've played together so much and the righty lefty. Six, although Seattle will have five. the righty lefty as well with Nikhil Kumar who normally plays mixed doubles with Amy Wong and will be going to check, flying Six. from here oh. to fight for a spot in Paris. He's flying to the USA. Czech Republic and then he's flying to Peru right after that. I mean, talk about some frequent flyer miles. We definitely wish Nikhil Kumar Seven. just Six. the best in luck and fight and bringing a set of positions for Team USA to Paris, where he will join Rachel Six, Sung, Amy eight. Wong, and Lily Jung. It's a very young and vibrant US team. Look at that backhand by Rachel Sung. Six, nine. That's a 10-point fantasy backhand. Rachel just picking everything up off the bounce. Ten, six. Fabi Diaz sending everything her way. And Diaz is, you know, really throwing everything she's got at <laughs> Rachel, and yet it's just never been enough. It's a sweep for Rachel Sung. 11-3, 11-5, and 11-6. Domination from the electric Rachel Sung. Tremendous stuff. She got a singles game win over Elsa and Lachine yesterday. It's her first singles match win of the MLTT season. Rachel Sung sweeps her singles match, and we're going to chat about it with her coach, Christian Lillerose. Christian, uh, Rachel was utterly dominant. Uh, what, what stood out most to you in that match? No, they, they are, um, it's interesting when you play female, female. It's very different dynamic than play women against men. So this is just something that Rachel is very strong against. They have played many times, uh, and the surprise factor that Fabiola has for the medium pips is difficult for many people but not for Rachel. She knows what's coming. Uh, she has good long serves, uh, uh, Fabiola does, but uh, Rachel, I've seen them, so there's no surprise there. So she, she really dominated the women's game there. there. So she played very good and, and uh, took care of business. What, uh, in your mind, Christian, has been the story of the weekend so far? Obviously not the weekend you dreamed of having, 
What, what, what have been the things you've been reflecting about over the last couple of days? I'm reflecting a lot about sickness, injuries, uh, debate, can you play, can you not play? That has been the story of the week, and not just for us. I mean, the same thing going with Seattle. They have one player sick also, who's not playing right now. So it's been a, been a tough weekend. When it matters the most, the best players have to perform, and if they can't, uh, results can flip-flop anywhere where it comes. Before we let you go, what, what, what's been your favorite thing about coaching Major League Table Tennis in this first season? Oh, that is, that is different. It's been a lot of fun. I remember from the first time in, in September, I just like, this is too much fun. I cannot stop doing this. I, I think the entertainment value and table tennis in general has been basically the best in the world. Better than WTT. That, that stands out. Thanks for your perspective, Christian. But good luck in the doubles. Thanks. Thank you so much. So this mixed doubles Zero, match, the men's one. doubles team for Seattle against the mixed team for Portland. And it One. feels like a oh. toss-up. <laughs> Certainly Rachel Sung did Chan's fantasy team some huge favors. I could, I could use another she, she got 15 points if possible here. She got 30 for you. If I, 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 I'll almost, like, I'm a, I'll be a politician Two. conceding One. if she sweeps this one too. And you're, if you're within seven going into the golden game, I like your chances. But uh, if, if Seattle can win one or two of these, then the road gets that much tougher for you. Well, the challenge is with Nikhil Kumar, who's serving, he has great double sense. Very effective as a lefty, mixing up the placement, mixing up the spin, to bring power and placement. And if he can set up Andrew Sal to let him do the heavy lifting, it can be a very formidable doubles team. What about the fact that Cole and Rachel Sung have played together all season long while Nikhil and Andrew are playing together for the first time in a match? Yeah, I, I think the familiarity, like just that type of shot right there, Three, knowing four. where to go and really to be able to protect your partner after you make a good shot, are you playing it to a location where the opposing team can counterattack? You're not going to see that happen too much with the Portland Three. team, whereas bigger shots from Seattle, but also bigger openings on the returns. Nice deep push by Kumar. Six. Rachel Three. had an opportunity. Seven. But Seattle Three. just jumping out a very strong 7 to 3 lead here in game 1. You see Nikhil Kumar going for those deep Four, pushes. Seven. Hoping that Rachel Sung when she plays that first offensive ball will be more of a lifting shot which allows Four. Andrew to cover it, counter attack. 8 4. Great strategic play there by the spinners. And there, Rachel says, if you go to the well that many times, you're going to see my Eight, backhand. Five. And she just jumped on that ball. Six, eight. If Portland's up at the table and Seattle's off of it, big advantage to Portland because of the firepower of Cole and Rachel Sung. But if the Seattle spinners can mix it up, six, nine. keep one player close to the table, and then let Nikhil float around. Ten, Game point six. for the spinners. That'll do it for game one. Rare miss from Rachel Sung. Surprised to see her miss with how locked in she's been. But Andrew Sow and Akil Kumar looking pretty comfortable together as a doubles pair. And Seattle is back within one on the scoreboard. Andrew and Akil take game one 11-7.
Certainly fun to see members of the Wichita State Shockers faithful here inside Coke Arena for table tennis this weekend. Look forward to being at Loyola University of Chicago. Three weeks from now, One, zero. home of the Ramblers. Loyola Chicago made a run to the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament men's basketball a few years back under Porter Moser. Zero, two. Certainly Wichita State has had a slew of great basketball players compete here at Coke Arena. Several Olympians One, in action two. this weekend here in the West Division competition, final weekend of the season. Three, Rachel Sun one. headed to Paris in the summer. And right now, with Kole, who had played for Ukraine in the Olympics, and Nikhil, who played in Tokyo. Yep. Rachel, soon to be a first time Olympian, would give, give us three two. out of the four in this particular match. You think Andrew Sal has that type of potential? Absolutely, absolutely. If he stays with it, definitely not outside his reach. Would love to see Nikhil and Amy Wong. Two, four make the mixed doubles pairing next weekend in Czech Republic. Have you thought about the time zone considerations of when you're going to have to be awake Two, to watch five. that? Well, it, it's wonderful with YouTube and <laughs> all the different platforms that are streaming these days that back in the day I used to have to call the press desk Six. at the Washington Post Two. to get results from a day ago, really? a day before at World Championships. You literally called the desk on your rotary phone? Exactly, exactly. And they would give me 12 hour updates of what happened the day before. Seven, two. Oh, beautiful over the table forehand smash two, by Rachel eight. Sung. She's hit a number of balls by Nikhil in this game and up eight to two. <laughs> and now you see when the orders change, two, the nine. experience of Portland is shining brightly. Wow. <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> just Ten, ripping it, two. just messing around. Nikhil looking around like, what sport is going on here? Ten, three. The first of nine game points fought off oh, by oh, Seattle. Oh, that's an interesting and, serve. Well, there's the second of nine game points Four, fought ten. off with a service error that looked uh, like one of mine. <laughs> Makes me feel better about some of mine, quite frankly. But the game does go to the Paddlers. Four, second so Cole and Rachel Sung bounce back in game two. Rubber Just game of the doubles. You had Kole in your fantasy. <laughs> it hasn't been Kole's best weekend of the season, but he was sharp in that game, aside from the service error late. <laughs> And then comes down on the opponent's side of the table. But it still has to come down on the 
Easy chance, nice. All right, cool. What's your name? Ed? That's so cool, one of our Dime. leaders is named MLTT.com well. slash shop to snag your own MLTT hey, merch. Official jerseys, t-shirts, and so much more. Game three here in the doubles begins with an ace from Andrew Sal. <laughs> Serving a whiff. Rachel again over the table. One. No oh. problem putting the ball away. Oh. Rachel Sung did not miss that one. Two, one. I'm sure you've thought about it, John. For your fantasy team, this is a huge game. It absolutely is, but I've got confidence in Portland. One, three. I should say I've got confidence in Rachel. Wow, beautiful drop shot by Andrew. Two, three. Rachel wins this game. We'll need three, three oh. golden game points in her favor to catch me. If and that would just tie. And she's gonna play at least eight, I'm sure. Well, we'll see. So I've talked to Christian. Four. I've told him. <laughs> well, now, now that who's his tampering? His ride back from the airport. This this certainly <laughs> sounds like much greater tampering than anything I might have done. Uh, hey, it's just the intel. <laughs> Five, three, you the ride back from the airport and you do what you have to. Paul Chi and Isak Vila Ortiz coming up. The third single spot. That'll be their first ever meeting in MLTT. Oh, short ball from Nikhil Kumar. And the again, Kole Lake getting up there. The double drop shot has worked wonders for Seattle. Turned by Rachel Sun, Six, just five. getting a racket underneath the ball, changing the spin, shoving it deep. Big point here. Kumar with the chop Six, from the backcourt. Portland had the opponents where they wanted it, but. Cole unable to execute on the final forehand, driving it into the net to tie this third game up at six apiece. Wow. Andrew Sal, what's he <laughs> pointing at? Can't believe he didn't six, make contact. Seven. That ball just. did not work the way he expected it to here in the air capital of the world, Wichita, Kansas. Seven. Oh. It's a game to four to win this doubles match. Andrew needs to keep his feet moving. Eight, seven. Saw where the ball was going, but just started reaching for it. And normally, Eight, that is a shot oh. that Rachel will make nine out of ten times. Just going long off the push. A little bit more spin to bring the ball down. We're tied up at eight again. Oh. 
Oh, great drop shot by Rachel. Eight to nine. Brought back a higher ball for Coley to just finish. Oh, look at that backhand attack directly off the serve. Ten, eight. Game points for the Paddlers. And that will finish it. Cole smacks an inside out forehand winner. Cole, Cole. Rachel Sung helps her team get five big points and helps Sean O'Neill get 40 big fantasy points as he tries to chase down his leader in the fantasy department, yours truly. 6-3, Paddlers. Welcome back to Major League Table Tennis here in Wichita. We're joined by Portland's Rachel Sung. Rachel, two out of three points in the doubles, three points for your team in the singles. Uh, how gratifying is it to play as well as you did today? Um, for us, it's the last match of the season, so it feels great just to kind of end it on a high note personally and hope the best for my team moving forward. So as I mentioned, as you're getting ready to come in, I do have you in my fantasy league, so it's absolutely critical <laughs> in the golden game that you tell Christian you want to play in one of the leadership roles and get as many points. Otherwise, I'm going to have to listen to Evan, so just make sure. Do you have a question? <laughs> no question, just a comment and an encouragement for Rachel who played so good, especially on the short balls, to keep the pressure on, keep moving your feet, and then just bring home the W for the Portland Paddlers Fan Support Club. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel, my, my question for you is, when you reflect back on this season from sep to September to now, what have been your biggest takeaways from your first year competing as a pro? Um, I think definitely like the new format. I think it's really taught me a lot on how to deal better with critical points. And I think it's definitely something I've been working on and I feel like I've improved as the season went by. And last thing, Rachel, uh, last night at the hotel, there was a meeting called and no one really knew what it was gonna be. It turns out it was a celebration for you and Amy and Lily. There was a cake with replicas of you that Sean designed. What, what was, we're, we're seeing video of it right now. What was it like to have everybody celebrating your uh, your trip to the, the Olympics this summer? Um, it was a really big surprise. So I think all of us were extremely grateful just to NLTT for even recognizing that. And we're just really excited, yeah. What, what, what was the moment like when you realized you qualified for the Olympics for the first time? Um, I don't think it really like sunk in like right there in the moment. I was just kind of overwhelmed. But yeah, it just felt like a dream come true. It was really unbelievable for me. Have, have you gotten any like fun emails from like the U.S. Olympic Committee about logistics or just like what you have to do to prepare to be in the Olympics for the first time? Um, not yet, maybe as it gets closer, but there's been some emails about like hospitality and like travel times. Yeah, so it's starting to feel a lot more real now. Cool. Well, Sean and I will be looking for you on a boat in the opening ceremonies going down the River Seine, yeah. and uh, we wish you the best of luck, and uh, thanks for being a part of this first MLTT season, Thank Rachel. Thank you so much. Thank Great you. Job.
you know how they're doing the Olympic Japanese opening ceremonies this year. It's different than any other opening ceremonies ever, branding, where the delegations are going to be on boats coming down the river through Paris. So, even better. We've got our third singles match. Leave it to the French to Winter's try something new. Isaac Vila versus Paul Chi. First meeting First between these two played. players this season. Zero, zero. Portman has a 6-3 lead as the match begins. Let's. Sean, what do you remember about your first opening ceremonies in Seoul, South Korea, 1988? Yeah, I think the biggest one was one, just zero. being among friends. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was the only male that qualified, so I was hanging out with the archery team, <laughs> and they showed me how they were winning their gold. Silver medals, which made me want to fight even harder to make it for Barcelona. But opening ceremony is obviously a big key. One, um, oh. 88 to 92, obviously. The dream team was the feature story there. In 92, yeah. Yeah, so. Um, what, were the, what were the big stories of the 88 Olympics going into it, you know, the, the big picture? The challenges were the big drug scandal with um, One, two. Ben Johnson winning the 100 meter dash and then getting disqualified. and. Yeah, that was eating up a lot of the oxygen for the very first table tennis in the games. Three, Korea one. played extremely well, winning a number of gold and silver medals, taking out the Chinese. But definitely a great honor. As an as a athlete in the Olympics, do you get Three, a pass two. that enables you to go watch other events? Absolutely. You just use your credentials. You can walk in. There's a section of every event for athletes only. And as coaches, you Two, can also do the same thing. Four. Sounds fun. What, what, what events did you go watch when you weren't competing? Um, I watched archery because I was hanging out with the men in the village and saw some track and field. Um, but the craziest thing was right after Three, I finished competing with four. them, five minutes, I was up in the NBC booth. They asked for some help because they had never oh. done table tennis before. So got to wear two different caps, which has kind of led me to working with you. Right. Four, all. Got a chance to work with Bud Collins. A tennis, tennis great out of Boston. A number of Wimbledons and French Go Opens. Go ah. What was life Four, like five. in the Olympic Village? I mean, how social were all the athletes with one another from different countries and different sports? I think if I had to sum it up five, with one word, all. it would be respect. Everyone there realized what it took to get them there. And regardless of the sport or the chance to medal, go, go. dining hall, you could be sitting next to three gold medalists from your Six, country or five. four spec, I mean, just players from all around the world. And um, you didn't see too much autographs or selfies at the time. We didn't have social media, but Six, just a lot of respect oh. and wishing everyone the best of luck in their competition. I'm sure you had your iPhone in 1988 in Seoul, South Korea, though, right? No. No, not so much. It was VH. You stay in a dorm room with a with a uh, landline in it. We six, shared seven. a landline within the entire Team USA, and I remember kicking Evelyn Ashford off the phone, saying, "You've been on it past ten minutes. Give it up. Um, and talk to your agent at some Eight, other time." Who, who did you need to call? Um, I had to call somebody to find out if I was allowed to do the commentary because normally you can't play both roles right. of an athlete and a press person. So. They said, in this case, they need some help. Eight, seven. Um, I got the green, green light from NBC. Paul Chi, a 9-7 lead here in seven, game one against Isak Vila. Both these players Eight, playing in the 3-4 spot have really upped their game later in the season. Vila has benefited the most from just regular team Nine. practices. Oh. And Paul, this weekend, taking out Lachine, as well as just getting his forehands. Oh, that's a tremendous backhand by Vila down the line. Nine, ten. Paul has been going for big shots in each of his prior matches. Isak Vila comes from behind to take game First one game over Paul Chi. 11-7 to Vila. And 
Uh, excuse me, 11-9 to Vila. And Portland gets its seven point of the match. Back here at Coke Arena, game two, this third singles match. Paul Chief felt like he was kind of in control of Sean, and then all of a sudden, Isak Vila turned the table on him. Spinner Couple really nice backhands at the end of game one to give Vila the victory. If you don't mind, I have a couple more Zero, questions one. about the Olympics. And the most important one is, how was the food in the Olympic Village in Seoul, South Korea in 1988? It was very good, and they have a lot of international stations Zero, <laughs> based one. on the fact that players from all over the world, so you could have a different cuisine every day if you wanted. And I will say the best food I've had also helping one. with the Paralympic team was in Beijing, mm. Peking duck every meal. It was just amazing. Do you remember the food being either better in Seoul or Barcelona? Barcelona had a Pizza Hut and McDonald's in the Olympic Village. In the village, and we had unlimited to show your card, one. get as many Sundays or Hawaiian pizzas that you wanted. Barcelona was on the beach as well. Two. That's right, you're oh. a Hawaiian pizza guy, aren't exactly. you? Exactly. You and my wife, I don't get it. I like pineapple, I just don't want it on my pizza. <laughs> Clearly, you don't want it. Eat your way Three, out of a metal, two. but it's kind of like a cruise ship where it's 24-7 <laughs> unlimited food plus all the Coca-Cola you can drink. Is there alcohol in the Olympic Village? I think two, in the Olympic four. House, which is where all the celebrations go on. I think Budweiser might have been a sponsor or <laughs> one of the other major beverages. Paul Chi, what a nice combo there. Two, five. To really set the stage here in day two. The other Olympic story I'll share is that in Barcelona, we had our own laundry services that we could make and do Three, our own laundry versus seven. handing it in. I needed a little bit of help one day, and as I found a short guy with red hair, asked him if he could show me how it worked. Turned out it was tennis. Jim Courier was helping me do my laundry. Four, seven. And um, I thought he was much bigger on TV. He's a short guy, maybe like 5'8", five 5'9", five big forehand. But um, Jim's become one of my favorite TV analysts. He is excellent, to. isn't he? He's so smart. Eight, four. He takes has, it has a way of delivering the information in a digestible way. Very similar to the way he played tennis, where known for after winning a slam to go out on a three or five mile run, just very effective. That's what you do after most broadcasts, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> to the player Nine, lounge. <laughs> oh, Paul Chi with, oh. I was, I, I was thinking about this, Sean. I, I remember you know, our first Nine. time working together was in Daytona Beach. 
And after the Sunday competition wrapped up, you and I went for a nice little walk on the beach together to reflect on the weekend. I, I wanted to Six, invite you for an afternoon walk along the Arkansas River with me this afternoon, if the weather permits. As long as there's no geese along the pathway. Well, that's, that's the real I'm reason I want you to, <laughs> I was gonna to be there to protect spinners. me. I was going to say, just want to make sure that I have my running shoes on if you choose that route. Timeout taken by Seattle. You know, when he, s he slips only this one to your forehand one because you missed many. When you did push him to that white corner in the forehand, that works. Because when he does the serve, you put it exactly where he stands, he attacks. So go wide in the forehand with that serve. You have the perfect curve to do that. Okay? And those serves that you're doing are working. Stick with both. It's working. Don't be afraid. Okay? Don't change because you want to change. The, the stone one to his back. Yeah, he's standing too close to the table. Okay? Yeah. Those for servers me, good for him. So change placement, maybe. But that serve works. OK? And be ready. You have to be ready. And get back closer to the table. Yeah. OK? How does he generate good. so much power? Let's go. Fight, fight. So, let's go. Two serves. It's been interesting to watch the coaches all throughout the season. All eight coaches in the league have just been remarkably dedicated, but they obviously you know, have their different styles. And also, this is something that while all these coaches have a ton of experience, no one has ever coached this format before. So in terms of team management and timeout usage and lineup, no, management. It, it, it's been a learning experience Ten, and they've seven. evolved as the season has progressed. The lineup has been so major, not just on who's playing the actual team match, but then when we get into the golden game, you have to be leading in order to have that big advantage. And Paul Chi takes 11, game seven, two game. very straightforward fashion, taking advantage of the timeout. Yeah, it's been a good weekend for Paul. Played well the other night against El Sayed Lachine, and now he's got a game off Isak Vila. Rubber game in this singles match is on the way. Isak Vila and Paul Chi, one game apiece. Third wait. We got Third a let. game. Paddlers to serve. Isak Vila pulled zero, the trigger zero. on the serve as Ivana Knezovic, lead umpire, was announcing the situation for the entire arena. One, zero. One, two. All right, Sean, you've had plenty of time to think about it. Championship weekend. Game number one, the Bay Area Blasters against two. the Princeton Revolution. Oh. Who do you like? I'm going to go Bay Area. I, I've got friends on Revolution, love their ownership. But I just think Three, two. that if Bay Area brings the full slate, 
especially with Lily. They are so strong. They're going to represent the Western Conference to get to the two, finals. Four. All right, you got the Bay Area Blasters. Game two on semifinal Saturday will feature the Carolina Gold Rush and the Texas Smash. And five, two, just to change. remind you, during the interdivisional weekend, Carolina beat Texas 12 to nine. But as that score suggests, Texas had a 9-6 lead at the end of regulation. Two, so five. for most of that match, Texas outplayed Carolina. What do you think happens in the rematch? I don't think you can bet against Enzo. He, he is so solid. He brings so many points. Super oh! professional. I know that the Texas team is going to be super hungry. Five, three. They're young. They want to get it done now. But I think the experience of Enzo, Hong Lin, I think they've just been the class act for the entire season on the East Coast. So Six, those will be my three. two semi-picks. That takes us to Championship Sunday. And in the third place match, by your bracket, it'll be Princeton against Texas. Who do you like in that one? Three, seven. I think I'm going to go Princeton. I think they're going to get the bronze. And then great variety of styles with Princeton also. Love their defend defensive players. So in Sean's bracket, he's got a championship game featuring the Carolina Gold Rush and the Bay Area Blasters. Three, eight. And quickly pull up their interdivisional weekend results. They played the first match of that interdivisional weekend and Carolina won 16 to five. Jim Balma beat Roman <laughs> Lorenz three games to none and then it was all Carolina after that. DuPont over Duan 2-1. Anglais and Lynn swept the doubles. Of course, uh, Lily Jung was not there so it was Nine, uh, three. Angie Tan playing with Kyle and Jong. Uh, Kai Jong won three straight over Adi Gadwani and then uh, Enzo beat Tao and Jung two games to one. So it'll be a very different lineup for the Bay Area Blasters in Chicago. Ten, uh, three. Who do you think is going to come out? Got to go with Gold Rush. You got the Gold Rush. Yep. Gold Rush for the gold. Four, just think ten. The, the experience, teamwork, the variety of styles that they bring to the mix. 11-4, 2 Good win one, for Isak Vila. As he dispatches Paul Chi, 11-4 in game three. That clinches the lead for the Paddlers heading into the final golden game of the regular season. But we got one more singles match still to come. McDonald versus Hockberg. haven't already done so, make sure you check out MLTT.com, news scores, video, merch, email, sign up, and oh so much more. We got one more singles match in the West Division's regular season, the Swedish showdown. Johan Hackberg for Seattle and Jonathan McDonald for Portland. Sean, we saw these guys battle a couple months ago. It's actually the end of January in Portland. McDonald outdueled his countrymen two games to one. 
Do you uh, look at McDonald as the favorite, or do you look at this as basically a toss-up? I think McDonald has a slight edge. Watching Hagberg in his previous match, he was really opting for a lot of forehand and backhand cut serve returns, and I don't think that's going to work off of McDonald's long serve. So the McDonald's serve, I think, is going to be the differential very fast, deep to the corners, and then he likes to play with his backhand. Hagberg, big forehand, big highlight player. Unfortunately, he will not get a chance, regardless of the outcome, to meet us in the interview zone, as we'll be going towards the order for the Golden Game. Yeah, very few players Zero. have coveted the post-game interview like Johan Hagberg has. Perhaps if he helps his team win the Golden Game, we'll have one more chat. Yeah, we'll bring him back in to oh. top off the season. Well, you, you look at, you know, what, where have these teams fallen short this year? And there is one glaring thing. Both teams have lost the Golden Game four times after starting with a lead. And that's tied for the league lead in that one, department. Three. And that's those yeah, six points you can't get back. That's right. Oh. The uh, the other six teams One, in the league four. Wait. have only had nine instances where they've lost a golden game after having a lead, and Portland and Seattle have done it four times each. Four, so two. And we'll see what happens today. Portland did come back from behind against Seattle. The first 5-0 comeback to this stage. One of just two 5-0 comebacks. Portland would have a 5-0 lead heading into this Golden Game if McDonald can get at least two points here in Four, his final three. singles match. I think it took the coaches a while to really figure out the importance of the order of play and getting these mismatches, especially going into the Golden Game with the lead. Four, oh. Heidberg really Four. loves to toss the ball high on his serve and then mix it up with spin. And his big forehand is what he relies on. Four, six. And that's true to form with Jonathan McDonald, Five, deep serve. Six get a backhand into play, and then come with the longer stroking forehand. Six all as they go Six. back to the towel. Oh. By the way, Sean, you didn't ask, but I have a different prediction for okay, championship let's hear weekend it. than you do. Okay, for the revolution. I, I think Princeton is going to beat the Bay Area Blasters. Okay, Six, in the first semifinal? Seven. In the first semifinal. And I like Carolina over Texas in the second semifinal. Seven, so oh. All East final. And I think Princeton is going to win it. I think they have been the best team in the second half of the season. I think we finally saw the best doubles team from Princeton, they, they, they beat Enzo and Hong with Eight, Jishan seven. and Angela. And I like Princeton's depth, as I've said all season long. Now I'm curious what Matthias Havasan is gonna oh. do. Because you know, over the course of the season, you, you travel six players, five of them play each day, but you have to mix and match. So all the CD players each sit out one match Eight, for the weekend. Nine. So that requires you to have six players to play over the course of the weekend. A championship weekend, it's going to be different. McDonald catches the edge. Tough break for Hagberg, and Jonathan Ten, has a game eight. point. It's been one of those weekends for Hagberg where something could go wrong. His luggage, I think, is still in Europe on his flight over. It's tough. McDonald takes game one, 11 8. 11 8 for Talk eight. a little bit more about Championship Weekend and why I think Princeton has the goods to take the crown after they started the season with just one win in their first seven matches in the fall. 
Portland now has a 9-4 lead over Seattle as McDonald takes game one over his Swedish countrymen. Game two underway, Johan Hogberg off to the two-point lead. And McDonald gets on the board. So as I think about a potential Carolina-Princeton rematch, I, I wonder, you know, who's going to play for Princeton in the CD slots? Well, it, it'll be two of the three, presumably, regarding availability. Don't know, but DeSantelon, Coyo, and Prishepa. And I, I think regardless of which of the two of those three play, I, I like their chances against two, Kai Jong three. and either Bastion DuPont or Jeremy Hazin. Yeah, I, I would, winning the lower tier is gonna be big for the revolution. And look, I, I don't know if there's any player in the league that three. has improved oh. his level from September to now than Jin Chin Wong. He, he was really sluggish at the start yeah, of the he, season. He had a slow start. And but, but the last couple months, I mean, playing through some personal adversity that he's had to deal with and the loss of his mom, he's just played at a really high level. Four, really three. impressive. So, and obviously Jishan, you know, took two out of three from Enzo Angles earlier this, this season. So, yeah, I, four, four. I just think Princeton has figured something out in the second half of the season. When all league matches and leagues around the world, it's great to have the superstar, but it's those three and four players Five, that four. really do get the job done. And I will agree with you, Evan, that Princeton on the lower tier looks really good on paper. I think about that as well in regards to you know their matchup with the Bay Area Blasters. You know, we don't know Five. who will play oh. between Silva, Duan, and Lachine. But those I gotta think Silva and Lachine. I would think so too. I mean so let's say it's Silva and Lachine against you know Koyo and Persepa. Five. It's gonna be just a great match. <laughs> yes, I it mean is. and of course when you've got Silva, the extra incentive to give the team that brought him into out of the pool. Five, Sending them seven. A nice little thank you message. Of course, we'll have championship weekend three weeks from now. And then just a few weeks after that, yeah. mid, mid, mid late May. We'll have Five, the eight. second MLTT draft. Encourage everyone to tune in. I believe it's going to be Tuesday, May 21st. Early for the West Coasters. Not that early. Noon Eastern. Nine. I, think I, I think it's noon Eastern. Yep. We have noon Central time on the graphic, but I think it's noon Eastern is the tentative schedule. If it's noon Central eight, time, well, then I've got an six. extra hour to eat lunch before <laughs> the draft. MLTT.com will have Nine, all the info six. leading up to it. Seven, nine. 
McDonald staying close in this game with the serve, trying to tie it up at nine apiece. Flailing like Spider-Man from nine. the crouch position. Hackberg could not find the table. So McDonald takes both Nine. points on his oh. serve. Oh, great return by Jonathan McDonald. Nine. Sets Ten. up a game point. Great. Got a golden point here, Sean. Ten, ten. All right. Donald you know held the shot. He won it. Stay with me. Just golden unable to convert. Points. McDonald serves. Double game point. Oh, Hagberg catches the edge and takes game two. So just like in January, the two friends from Sweden will go to a rubber game. Two very close games again, 11-8 to McDonald in game one, but Hackberg takes the golden point for Seattle. Sign up for MLTT Fantasy League. Be a part of the championship weekend event. Our prize is awarded for the top finisher every single weekend. This is the 1,320th and final game of the MLTT regular season, not including the Golden Games, in which we're about to have the One, 88th oh. and final Golden Game of what's well, been a pretty incredible first year of MLTT. I think it's probably exceeded even Flint Lane's wildest imaginations in a variety of ways when he conjured this league into existence. Well, I, I think the biggest Two. genius One. is the Golden Game. So often in world competition when you have a mismatch or a slight advantage for one team playing the best of five similar to davis cup very anticlimactic play three and you're done golden game completely changes everything Two. no oh. lead is safe of course when we go into the playoffs the golden game will be even bigger as the deciding factor where teams can start with an even greater margin right as compared to today Three, where two. it will be maximum five Right now, Johan Hagberg Two, would like to four. bring it to a three-point lead. So do you want me to do anything special or not? 5-2 lead for Five, Johan Hagberg here in game three. Another look at the bracket, the Blasters and the Revolution. 4 p.m. Central Time, 
20 days from now, Carolina and Texas will follow. Championships will culminate three weeks from today Six, in Chicago. Two. Hackberg rips another winner. He's Seven, playing well two. here in game three. And the other element, Evan, is just how MLTT has really brought the world to the U.S. borders and three, given the seven. aspiring U.S. players a chance to play in front of home crowds, be able to continue to go to school, and just give them an opportunity to experience professional table tennis. What's been your Four, favorite crowd seven. of the season? I've got to imagine I know the answer. Yeah, it's between Daytona Beach and Portland, so I'm going to go with Portland. <laughs> you know, the home fans, and I think the biggest credit there goes to G-Way Shaw, who just playing with 102 Seven, temperature, five. couldn't get out of bed on Friday, bit, but brought Portland back into the chase with his amazing matches on Saturday and Sunday, and having the entire Portland table tennis community, as well as a lot of new faces people who hadn't seen the sport and just coming out and standing room only. It was an epic atmosphere in January. These two players, McDonald and Hogberg, played in front of that atmosphere against one another. But I will Six, say that Pleasanton, eight. with Lily's crowd and her fans, right. um, cheering for her where she took six individual games against the men. She beat both of these guys and did it in convincing fashion. And look, there's no shame in losing to a four-time Olympian. Seven, eight, really jump. Time out, Absolutely spinners. not. We got ourselves a so timeout time here for Seattle Portland. This is interesting. A one-point game here in the rubber game, final game of regulation. Every time you go behind the table, the ball misses the table. You cannot lob here because you don't know what's the environment that they're in. You were playing really good closer to the table, and all of a sudden you started backing up. Stay with what's working. Your serve to the forehand, it's working. Try it again. Be confident. And then attack to the forehand. Okay. What, 15 to 0? They'll start to Let's go on. We need it. Let's go. 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 let us Correct something Seven, I said. Eight. I think I said it as well. Yeah, well, Lily Jong uh, beat Yuan Rebite, and Jonathan McDonald had a good battle with Yuan Hackberg losing two games to one. We got a good battle here eight in game all. three. Eight all. Now, there's obviously a big difference in having a five point lead to start the Golden Game versus just a three point lead. And McDonald. Inches in front, nine, eight. eight and nine. You saw Hagberg listening to his bench, getting back up to the table. Let. Not wanting to go full defensive in lob mode in this final few points. Nine, oh. Nine to nine, one game apiece. McDonald serves. And Hagberg takes the lead again. Great hooking nine, block ten. into the body by Hagberg. Would not be surprised if he goes for the winner directly off the serve. Wow, McDonald handles the Ten. net ball, oh. and the tension oh. rises just a little bit here in Wichita. Final game of the season, final golden point in a game to 11 of the regular season. The 202nd golden point of the year, Hackberg serves. Oh, you gotta be kidding me.
A netball deserves an edge ball, and Hackford with something of a smiley, sarcastic celebration. What a wacky way for that match to conclude. Can you believe it? It's a cruel, cruel game sometimes. We got one more golden game still to come. And that was really something else. What a match, what a battle. So, the golden game will determine the winner in this match. It's either going to be 15 to 6 or it's going to be 12 to 9 because it's winner takes all in the golden game. Now, I know many of you have your favorites. Libby, I know who your favorite is, but I'm not going to say it out loud because she's very shy and she's from Puerto Rico. Joking. Final match of the first regular season in Major League Not Table Tennis between words, Portland and Seattle. And the so spinners got off to the good start. Andrew Sal took right two out of three now. from Tyrese Knight. But then Rachel Sung took the table and came to play. Three straight games demolishing Fabiola Diaz. And then in the doubles, Rachel, along with Cole, took two out of three. So that gave Porton a lead. They have led ever since. Isak Vila continued the paddler's momentum with two out of three in the third single spot over Paul Chi. And then an entertaining battle of the Swedes in the fourth single spot. McDonald took game one 11-8, but then both golden points going to Jay Hagberg, including this cruel, cruel way to finish it. McDonald can't help but smile. That sets the stage for the final golden game of the MLTT regular season. And we await the lineup with Christian Lily Rose, Luba Sadovska, and Mimi Bosica. Okay, so we have the Portland Paddlers leading 9-6, to six, which means you will begin with a three-point lead. Seattle, you will serve first, and you will choose first. Paul Chi. Paul Chi will go first. Who will play first for Portland? Isaac. Isaac Vila will go first and second. Cole. Cole will go second. Seattle. Nikhil. Nikhil Kumar will go second and third. Andrew Tsao. Andrew Tsao will go third. How about you, coach? Tyrese. Tyrese Knight, and then who will go fourth? Jonathan. Oh! <laughs> Jonathan McDonald, fourth. Johan. Johan Hogberg will go fourth, which means Fabiola will go fifth for you, and Rachel Sung fifth. Excellent. Good luck. Let's have fun. Good luck. Mimi, me too. <laughs> what do you think, Sean? Bring it Yolanda, on. You I say think something? Rachel needs to be winning a couple points here for the home team. So just to clarify, you're focused on your fantasy team right now, and you're only focused on surpassing me. And you need 12 points from Rachel Sung from the fantasy perspective to tie me. And it's four so points yeah, so per if she, point. If she wins three points in the Golden Game, you will tie me, as this is a look at what we had coming into this final match. I'm MLTT P by P at the top. You're a MLTT color to beat Evan, exclamation point, factorial, whatever you want to say. Uh, anyway, so you need three points from Rachel to tie me, four from her to win. They're gonna, they're gonna play Meanwhile, eight. we got a 9-6 lead for Portland, and we got Paul Chi and Isak Vila to get us started. And Isaac Vila with the spin takes the first point. So now that four points are on the scoreboard, they will switch in. Coming in for the Portland Paddlers, it is Cole. And on the receive, Nikhil Kumar, four serving zero. That's 
Top edge of the racket. The ball down the stadium. Brian Great serve return the by Nikhil, unable paddlers. to convert. The paddlers Let's continue. Twice, the ball clips the edge of Nikhil's paddle and goes straight up. Paddlers looking very strong. Seattle gets its first point of the goal of the game. Ole takes three out of four over Nikhil Kumar. It By the way, the craziest tonight, thing the about Portland our personal Paddler situation is Andrew the New Jersey Sal weekend last month, seven, you literally beat me in fantasy by one fantasy point. That's all it takes. <laughs> oh, it's the first time you beat me all season, so it's okay. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Seven, I need Seattle to get on the board trailing seven to two. Heavy top spin, the most aggressive chopper in the game, cool in the hand. Two serving eight serves with Andrew and Sal. Flip! Complete deception on the serve. Fast top side spin, tries the hand and gets back. It's three serving eight. Nerves in the arena. Oh, oh, beautiful. Well done. What a timely a step shot. around by Tyrese Knight finding the open court. And now, and now we're back to the Battle of Stockholm. Paddlers, Jonathan McDonald. A little conversation with his opponent, Jay Hopper. Jonathan McDonald gets a chance to bury the memory of the edge ball from singles. Ooh, Looked like Hagberg went for another table, edge. The table not big enough. Far side. It has been all Portland. Let's. Beautiful inside out so loop by Hagberg. Loaded with spin. Four serving 11. Under the Donald table, getting the, the upper hand. Frustration. It is 12 to 4. Portland Packers. There we go. Rachel and versus Bobby. I know that's the challenge here. Four. So you need She's, her to get three I, or four. I need to think. That's a point for Seattle. And a point for Evan. In a matter of speaking. It's going for the tie. Perfect Rachel responds, or she dominated the singles well. match with Fabiola. These are 33 to 14. That's it. just ridiculous. Oh, 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 oh. Take that, Seattle Spinners. For you and me, Sean, it could all come down to this point. And so Diaz wins it as Rachel fans on the backhand reply. It's 14 to 6. Now Sean's a big Seattle but Spinners fan. Exactly. Ready for the spinners to the take this to the brink. It's okay if Abby wins the point. Seattle stays in the match. So we need Paul. <laughs> we need Nikhil. And we need Andrew to tie this golden game up oh, and that's a nice shot by oh, Paul Chi. Smooth as can be, driving it down only the had one point initially, so seven. now two serves apiece. And that's the oh, shot I was looking for. Empty backers of spin. Via overcooked two that one. Two serves to come, eight serving 14. Two points here with the serve. Oh. Isaac Vila making it count from inside the table, a little top of the net. Eight serving 15, second serve with Paul Chi. Yeah. 
She and sends it long for Vila. The split. Kole comes to the table to against Nikhil Kumar. Final four points of the season for these two stars. Interesting to see what their futures hold in a variety of different ways. We know Kumar is going to have his hands full over the next two Looking weeks. Looking for the line, but it doesn't you know, come down. Better time than right eight. now to win three points. Wow. And there's one. Somehow he steals that table. point from the jaws the of the feet. Wow, that's Back nice. Hand the follow up forehand fade, and Nikhil Kumar bringing it back in 10, serving 17. But he missed it. And it's so 18 Portland, to 10. Portland three points away as Tyrese Knight comes to the table Tyrese against Knight Andrew Sal. These are not with looking Andrew good Tau, ticket in for hand, MLTT color. Just beat Evan. <laughs> The touch, the feeling right off the bounce as Tyree Snipe takes it 1910 for the Paddlers. How does he get it we back? We have Tyree reached. Tyree Snipe covers the line. Game point. And it sets up 10 golden game and team match points for the Paddlers. Sal fights yet. one off. Sal fights one off. 11 serving 20. Back Andrew Sal keeps alive. Seattle alive. Seattle spinners. The Still spinners need to Jay Hackberg to come up with a golden go. sweep against it's Jonathan McDonald. For on the Sean to get his fantasy player Rachel Sung back to the table. And that's oh, one. Tricks and spins from under the table. A little the snake action side. there. With a smile going Three on. Match points Got a smile in a row. out of Jay Hagberg. Oh, around there the edge. What a shot there. by Hagberg. And now with the serve. Yeah, the drama is real right now. He can hold both of his serves. He missed and it, and that will do it for the first regular season of Major League of Table Tennis. McDonald finishes the Golden Game for Portland as the Paddlers take it 21 to 14. And we are on the championship weekend in Chicago. We'll be back to wrap it up from Wichita right after this. But this season, there were very strong teams in the West. Yeah, we got you. Also get your MLT t-shirt to show people that you were here, that you love table tennis. Try to get your own team, man. Just say, just say. All right, it's been a lot of fun, Christian. Congratulations, I paid attention to the explanation in the beginning. And that brings the show to a wrap. If you have any questions about table tennis, before we get clean up, you might have a chance to come down here and play. Christian would like to say a thing or two quickly to you. Wichita Team Tennis Association, thanks for coming here and supporting us. Let's just find more of the guys. We're glad to be here. Absolutely. WichitaTableTennis.com. If you're looking to play more, Josh, Billy, Nathan, Patrick, Xavier, you can play the Wichita Table Tennis Club. Megan, you guys, awesome. And of course,
Portland Paddlers prevail here to close out our weekend in Wichita, but the real story is MLTT Championship Weekend, which is on tap April 27th and 28th in Chicago, and the semifinal showdowns are set. The Blasters and the Revolution will play in semi number one, Carolina and Texas in semi number two. First ever MLTT Championship will be 3 p.m. Central Time three weeks from today. And for the last time during the regular season, we welcome you back to our broadcast spot. Evan Lepler with the Hall of Famer, Sean O'Neill. 88 matches, over 1,300 total games, over 200 golden points. How would you describe the first season of Major League Table uh, Tennis? It's just been a dream and a treat for me to be part of this family, part of this team, international table tennis in the United States, and I can't wait for Chicago. What do you expect in Chicago? A lot of fireworks, a lot of te tears, a lot of celebration. Um, it's just going to be great table tennis. Again, it's Princeton and the Bay Area Blasters in the first semifinal. Then Carolina will take on Texas. The Blasters did not have anything clinched coming into this weekend, but they won two of their three matches to seize first place. And Texas comes from out of the playoff picture, 11 points out of a playoff spot by defeating the Paddlers on Friday and then going on to beat Seattle and the Blasters on Saturday and Sunday. So Texas battles into the postseason. Meanwhile, the Portland Paddlers, tough Friday and Saturday, but if it's a small consolation, they do finish off the season by beating Seattle for the fourth time in six matches this year. A lot of highlights for the Paddlers throughout the season, including today, particularly for Rachel Sung but uh, not enough overall. Paddlers finish with 217 points, 10 points out of a playoff spot. We thank you for being with us all season long. We look forward to being with you from Chicago at the end of the month. For our entire Ultimate Production team and from our broadcast partner, Sean O'Neill, Evan Lettler saying so long from Wichita. We will see you in Chicago.